Welcome to the hottest real estate topics on the planet, keeping you up to date with all the creative ways to buy and sell real estate without bank qualifying, so anyone can build real income starting today. Here is another great show with Dealmaker Bill and Pete the Rookie. All right, here we are. Another episode of Flipping Houses for Rookies. Good morning, Peter. Hello, Bill. Hello, everybody. How you be today? I be. Yeah, I got it. I be. Are you be? I be in too. All right. Episode number 405. And the title of today's episode is Expert Secrets on Talking to Sellers Comfortably comfortably being the main word there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here's the description. When you call a seller to talk about a purchase, what do you say right away to get their get the attention of the seller so they will want more information? Today, we will unlock the secrets of engaging property sellers with ease and confidence. After all, one conversation could be your next big deal. And if that is not happening, what's wrong? Find out today what top experts do on the phones to get those big deals so you can compare it to what you're doing or not doing. Hmm. Imagine a mastering the art of talking to sellers to make your next big deal transaction. Learn how to hook sellers interest and close deals with finesse. You will soon realize this isn't about manipulation. It's actually mastering the art of comfortable communication that feels right for both sides. And when done, as we explained today, the seller will always feel like you're on their side, even though you are steering them to the deal that works best for you and your buyer and them, the seller. Reshape your approach to talking to sellers and you will shed the un comfortableness of talking to sellers and start making way more deals. Let's get started and dig in. You ready? Ready to go. All right, so let's do some housekeeping first. So the first thing is, is thank you for being here. Thank you for listening to us. Make sure you subscribe to wherever you're watching us or, or listening to us. Uh, make sure you like it. Like the podcast leave it leave a, a comment if you would um, also uh, if you have any questions you can go to flipping houses for rookies.com top right hand side there is a uh, support link there there's also I don't know a couple dozen maybe 25 or 30 free things you can get about career real estate if you go to the top there says free stuff you can get a bunch of stuff there downloads and stuff that has uh, no strings attached um, and we record every Thursday morning at 9 30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. <clears throat> so if you want to be part of the conversation uh, of the podcast and you stay on topic of the podcast, you can uh, go to either YouTube, LinkedIn, or uh, Facebook. Just type in Flipping Houses for Rookies and you'll find us Thursday mornings, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, doing a live stream. Uh, we live stream it on Thursday and then uh, my daughter Emma takes everything and puts it into our syndicating platform and it goes out as a podcast on Monday. So there you go. Okay. Okay. So what should we talk about here? <laughs> well, you said a few times being comfortable. Mm -hmm. So I know a lot of people are uncomfortable ordering pizza on the phone live, you know, they have to do it online. So the comfortable part probably appeals to a lot of people. Okay, how about you? I'm not uncomfortable. Uh, 
but I, um, I I could always get better at getting through to people. I think I do, but you know, more sales or more yeses is always better. So I wouldn't know like what's not quite right, but uh, maybe we can get together on that later and debug that or just look more closer at it. But you know, just being able to talk to somebody in the first place. One thing you've been saying a lot is just like listen to people and just talk to them and see what they want, try to help them. So that part I think uh, I feel a lot better about and just you listen to them like you talk to somebody, right? Yep. Yep. So let's talk about comfortable. Yeah. So what does being comfortable mean? Well, from my perspective, be like not worried about what you're going to say, not worried about the numbers you got to talk about. Gee, what deal should I do? But all those things should unfold if you just calmly talk to somebody and listen. But, you know, for a while, until you get used to it, you're going to be trying to have everything ready to go. Right. So you're not really listening if you're trying to get everything ready to go. If he says this, I'll do that. If it comes up, if, 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 like, oh, my God. You can get pretty goofy. Okay. Good. So... Um... We're kind of. I, I really don't have a, an agenda today. I'm just. We're just gonna talk. Oh. Uh, which is why we're doing this. So. So basically, from what you're telling me, or what I think <laughs> I understand, mm -hmm. is if we could talk about when you call a seller, you feel eased and relaxed, mm -hmm. not stressed, and you just can. You can talk to someone. Because there's two ways to talk to some, two ways to talk to a seller, right? Yeah. I mean, anybody could just talk to a seller. But I think the the uneasy part or the not relaxation part is making sure you get the right information so that you can give them advice on what to do. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. So the stress comes from a asking. How can we do this? You know, asking for the numbers, mm -hmm. and then I think the biggest stress is is once you get the once you get the information, what do you do with it? Yeah, well, to me, there's also the part of, I mean, when we do a deal, it it goes one of two ways: either they will not wait for the money for some reason, they will not wait. They don't want to wait. They're moving away. It's too far. They don't want to bother. They just don't want to be tied to the property in any way at all. So we might try to offer them a better, a better deal financially if they wait. Sometimes they just won't. So we have to cross that bridge first. They, they need cash right away or they're willing to wait. And I guess what happens is you need to have a viewpoint that you're not there to convince the person to do what you want to do. It's more finding out what they want to do or what they really need to do and help them do that. And if it doesn't work out for what we want to do, it's not a deal. And most people you talk to won't be a deal because they have an agenda that doesn't fit our agenda. So you don't have to worry about making them do what we want or convincing them or twisting their arm because it doesn't work that way. I mean, you always say, right. find a motivated setter, seller. It is <coughs> convince somebody. Um, <clears throat> that's a that's a good starting point. Or find out what their motivation is. Might be a better way to say it. Like, why are you selling the house? What do you need? If I offer you more money, can you wait? You know, all those things. But it depends on the person. You know. Okay, so let's let's start there then. Okay. Yeah. It depends on the person. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to tell you after sitting in thousands of houses. I want to say over, it was like 42 or 4,300 last, last I counted, right? Yeah. I don't do that since COVID, but talking to way more than that, sellers. Yeah. Okay. Here is the most vital, vital point that has become difficult for me to teach. Mm-hmm. In fact, we're going to talk about this on episode 406. 
which is the next episode. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> which, by the way, you want to hear the title of that? Yes, yes, because you're smiling and want to tell me, so you go right ahead. <laughs> uh, when I was a creative real estate rookie. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's episode number 406. All right. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so back to what we're talking about here. So this one single point gets overlooked in the nervousness and the uncomfortableness and the uh, dramatization that you are making in your own head. Mm-hmm. The things you think the seller will say or not say. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dramatize this a little bit, okay? Sure. So let's say, I'm just going to do this ad hoc. Let's say you were uh, at a, I don't know, on a, at a Memorial Day picnic. All right. Your relative, we'll say your brother, you don't have a brother, but let's say your brother or sister or cousin or somebody invites you to this picnic. <clears throat> and you're like, yeah, I haven't seen my family in a while. I haven't seen some of these friends. It's like, it's warm weather finally. It would be really good to just take a day off and just go chill out with these people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you with me? Sounds easy. So you're all back on the deck. You know, we're in the backyard. <clears throat> and... They're cooking hot dogs and hamburgs or steak or whatever it is you eat, right? Uh, and you're just kind of like, you know, hanging around, maybe having a beer, you know, just kind of chilling out. And you're just kind of like working the crowd, mm -hmm. right? Now, here comes the important part of the message. So you meet somebody you don't know. We'll say you meet some guy you don't know. Yeah. Right, <clears throat> and this guy starts just complaining about life. <laughs> okay, maybe starts into some politics. Maybe you like Donald Trump and he likes Biden or vice versa, and he just starts talking about his opinions and trying to force them on you. Mm hmm. Right. Yeah. How long do you think that conversation will last? Well, see, Tuesday morning after having breakfast with my two friends from when we were 14 in the band, and about an hour later at the guy's house when we're chilling out, he starts doing exactly what you're saying. Uh, but it wasn't forceful. It was just like, oh, you're going to bring that up? Like, I'm not saying anything. I'm not going down that road. Uh, so that conversation was very short, and we changed the subject. Okay. And that's the point, so right? Nope. Nope. So, so you're, you move on. You somehow escape this gremlin. Yeah, like, sure. I mean, your question was, how long does the conversation last? So. It's not engaging, right? No. So that part of the conversation, you might still talk to the guy, but that part, finito, go away. Right. So, so there's an out reality. You don't agree. So we'll just call reality agreement, right? Because yeah. if we all agree that a car looks like this, then that's what cars, that's what cars are called because they yeah. look like that. Yeah. If we all agree that this is a podcast, then, then we'll do that. Right. Yeah. So you, you, you move on, right. Mm -hmm. Now you kind of run into, uh, someone else and this someone else, um, does real estate. Mm. Right. Okay. And you start and you start chatting with them, and all of a sudden you're sharing ideas. Well, we do this, and they say, "Well, I never heard of that, but you know, I've done this in the past." Mm -hmm. Right. And you talk to that person. We'll say for forty-five minutes. Yeah. What is the difference between those two conversations? And I promise you, you will not get the answer. It's not a trick answer. It's too <laughs> obvious. But go ahead. I want to just see. I would be impressed if you got the answer. Oh, geez. I mean, I should know this. <laughs> no, not necessarily because it's too obvious. I know. You most always people have, don't. 
you know, there's, uh, yeah, sometimes you have. Uh, a I'm not really trying good... to trick you or anything no, no. like that. I'm not trying. It, I'm not you... trying to make you look bad or anything. I'm no, just, that's, I that's just fine. Want you, to, you just I'm have trying a really to dramatize good... it. Sure, you have a really good uh, uh, look at some things at times, so like a different view. Something you said right. last week in the podcast, I said to somebody, I was like, that is really, really good. Yeah, my partner came up with that. Like, that is really a good way Thanks. to look at it. So it happens. Well, thank you. Uh, so what's the difference between those two conversations? Well, the obvious thing is that you don't share common ground or you haven't found common ground. Right. You know, somebody brings something up, you don't, you don't agree with it. Maybe you should change the subject and find something that you agree on. But how are you going to talk to somebody? If you're not on the same page, like not even on the same movie theater. Okay, that's good. So what did you inherently do before you invested your time in the conversation? You pre-qualified. Oh, yeah, you would have to decide if you want to bother moving on with the person. Like if he's a real whack job, like you didn't stay, you didn't keep talking to the first guy because he's just like, Whatever his opinion, it's just like so far from yours, and he's not willing to listen to you either. The one thing you said was he's foisting the opinions on you. He's not asking for your opinion. He's not right. open to what you think, and there's no sharing. So it's right. like there's nowhere to go with this guy. There's nothing to say. Right. Bye-bye. So this, <clears throat> this is the undertow of every phone call you make. You need to be able to, within the first three to five minutes, decide whether this person's going to harass you or be flexible and listen to your thoughts and ideas. Mm -hmm. This is what's out. It's not confidence. It's not, it's not skill. It's not anything. Because the truth, the absolute raw truth, as blunt and blunt as can be, is this. Engaged sellers are what you need. You do not need skill on deal structuring. You do not need skill on manipulation. You do not need skill on how to sell the house. You don't need any of that. If you have a person that says yes more than they say no, they are motivated. <clears throat> If you have a person that says no more than they say yes, they are a suspect. And you should figure that out in the first three to five minutes of the phone call and decide whether or not this person deserves your attention. Mm. Because the truth is, is if you've listened, even if you listen to our podcast, most people that are around me and you have been around creative real estate, even though this is real estate for rookies, they've done some of the course, they've spent some money, they've read books, they've watched YouTubes, they know more than the average bear. Yeah. And that alone makes them worth speaking to. Mm-hmm. Okay? That alone makes them worth speaking to. Right, but right there is a very, very big point that beside the yeses and the noses, um, you can tell in a few minutes talking to somebody if they're open to your ideas at all. Like you used to you use the word flexible when you talk to people. That means they would change their mind. Like, well, maybe I could do that. But like you talk to one guy, like, no, I wouldn't do that. Nope, I don't, no, I wouldn't do that. So not, you know, in a couple minutes, you, you throw out two, three, four ideas. He says no to the ideas. Like, okay, never mind. You just, you're not open to anything. Forget it. Right. Forget it. And you can tell so, that pretty quick, right? Yes, we're going to talk about that in a minute. But okay. before we do that, there's one more point I want to bring up. Okay. <clears throat> Another very obvious fact, which we've talked about in the past. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Regardless of what anybody thinks, what the scientists say, what the psychologists say, regardless of how the real world, world turns, there's this thing called an axiom. Mm -hmm. An axiom means that something happens without any law. Just because it's just a natural thing. Gravity is an axiom. You, you don't have to figure it out. You don't need to know the science of gravity. Mm -hmm. You don't need to... 
you just know that if you pick something up off the floor and you let it go, it's going to fall. Mm -hmm. Every single time it happens that way. <clears throat> okay, so this is a basic axiom. Mm -hmm. Considerations, a.k.a. ideas, and mental image pictures run this world. There is nothing you can see on planet Earth physically that didn't start with someone's idea or mental image picture. Mm -hmm. Just go on History Channel, watch uh, Food That Built America, Brands That Built America, Titans That Built America, a anyone. Now they have Disney That Built America, that they're doing a documentary on Walt Disney, which is fascinating. Right? I read his bio, and it's pretty interesting. He's yeah. he, he went through some stuff, right? <clears throat> ideas are everything. Mm -hmm. Ideas are in your mind as pictures, whether you realize it or not. You see pictures. You, you, you turn symbols and letters and words into pictures. Yeah. Right? I, I read a book not too long ago on memorization. How do you memorize something? Yeah. Right? And, and the trick is, is you, is you make these little movies in your head that are ridiculous so you remember them. <laughs> like if you're trying to remember, memorize, you know, the Hamburg was burnt, then you might have a picture of, the, of McDonald's burning down. Yeah. Right? So I'm, I'm a little diverted here. But the point is this. You have ideas and pictures. I have ideas and pictures. And the art of communication is the ability for me to understand your pictures clearly, fully duplicated and understood as if you made a photocopy of it and then handed it to me. Yeah. And vice versa. Hmm. So what happens is if you go into a transaction or a conversation and you have neediness because you need to make money because you have your situation and you need to make 10 grand by the end of the month, otherwise you're giving up real estate, <laughs> right? <laughs> or if there's something pushing on you or pressing on you, is that going to affect swapping mental image pictures or ideas? Well, you would have way more attention on yours and the problem sitting there in your own head than theirs. Right. Now, I'm being very profound, and I'm going to stop doing that in about two minutes because I want people to understand how important this is. The definition of perception is the ability to communicate without physical universe stuff. I feel like you're sad, Peter. Is that true? Oh, that kind of perception, like... Well, here's the thing. You're on yeah. the phone with a person. You can't see them. You can't touch them. There's no physical universe stuff. So just by the way they're talking, yeah. I feel like this property is really leaning on you. Is that true? Mm. It's a perception. It's a mental image picture or a thought that you picked up through their emotions. Mm -hmm. It's an inherent thing to do. All humans can do it if you just pay attention to it. Well, sometimes you call somebody. They pick up the phone. They go, hello. Yeah. You go, uh oh. What's, uh oh. What's wrong with this guy? Like, hi. You okay? So just, I, I'm not going to elaborate on that, but just realize that that what we think is everything. Now, there's a whole bunch of science that goes on behind that. Like, how do you control your thoughts, your subconscious mind? I mean, there's just, you know, there the people have like experiences that were bad. Mm. You know, people have circuits. You know, that were implanted into them by daddy. You know, Daddy always said the only way to make money is blah. Yeah. You know, I, I I'm not gonna I'm gonna remain nameless, but I have some people that I work with that I run up against that. Wow. The, their Daddy, and I know because they've told me. Their yeah. Daddy told them this is the way it was, and they can't undo the circuit. Wow. Right. Stuck, so huh? you know, m money's bad. You know, all those things you read in books. You know, those are all circuits. So, so you might it might it's like a pinball. Uh, playing pinball, you know, the ball might head in one direction and then it hits something and next thing and all, it's off somewhere else. <laughs> it's bouncing. Right? <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of technology behind that, which I'm not trying to be a psychologist today, but just realize that there, what you're trying to do is you're trying to understand, you're trying to get a photocopy 
of that person's image that they're thinking about that they don't even know there's an image there and you're just going to do that with questions yeah a lot of times they don't have it all uh formalized in their head right like what they really want to do they're kind of grasping around and talking to people maybe they'll figure it out or they're just going through the motions and you're trying to figure out what they're trying to figure out and they don't even know right yeah now now i'm just kind of going down the list because remember this is a bit advanced okay mm -hmm. and i'm going to bring all this together in a few minutes now the next thing so you can't have neediness otherwise it taints the flow of ideas yeah because neediness is a must-have i must have this the seller is going to give you that all the way through so if you have it and the seller has it, then you're going to have this ridge between the two of you, like a wall, mm -hmm. and you're not going to be able to swap pictures because they think they're right and you think you're right and nobody will win. Yeah. Not, not flexible. Right. Now, let's rewind a little bit and let's get back into how do you pre-qualify. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now realize that I bring up the image thing because that's what you're trying to do. It's part of the pre-qualifying. If you know what their expectations are or what they're thinking and how this is going to turn out, mm -hmm. that helps a lot. And I'm going to tell you how to do that in a minute. Okay. However, your mission and purpose is important. And a lot of people don't do this. If your mission and purpose is cloudy and not clear, you're not able to get the seller to understand what you want to do. Hmm. I go through this with, with students. Well, so, uh, Sean used to do this to me. Ah, you got to call this guy right away. Can you call him? I, can, I told him you'll call him in 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I'm in the middle of something else, right? <laughs> yep. How come? He's texting me. They're subject to. They want to do a subject to deal. And then yep. I got on the phone with them. I, I, I jump through hoops, which I don't anymore. I jump through hoops. <clears throat> and I get on the phone, and they don't even know what subject two is. <laughs> yep. Yep. He did the math, and it was a subject two mathematically. In his so mind, we, yeah. Well, we pre-qualified the deal mathematically. This is what happens to most rookies, mm. is they get all wrapped up in the deal structuring, and they forget the other half of the formula the seller's emotional desires because the way you do a deal is you take the seller's emotional desires and you match it to the math of the deal so you can and you make the right math happen for them mm. which is why we have seven, seven strategies and you get deals we're not used to doing that because there's no there's very few places where we have to do that uh you know you go to the grocery store you how much or you go to an auction and how much yeah, even buying cars is a little bit of that, but you know, this is there's so much more of this the way we do it. People are not used to even thinking like that. Right. But you have to. Yep. You're not buying the house. You're selling the seller. Yeah. Well, the first problem we have is is in career of real estate, we're not dealing with the property. Yeah. And that's that's a big mistake rookies make. Right. So the reason why is because creative real estate is dealing with the prop dealing with the I'm sorry, dealing with the paperwork that controls the property. Mm -hmm. And you do that with, you know, agreement for deeds and you do that with lease options and you do that with, you know, subject to, you know, you do this. So so you're controlling the property with paperwork. So mm -hmm. the property has nothing to do with it. No, all we want to know is that it's functional. There's enough. There's enough bedrooms, bath. The guy starts. Well, you know, we painted this, and the rug might no, no, need that. No, 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 no. This is the mistake, and I think this is a mistake you make. Okay. When you're on the phone call, you know, you're you're jumping ahead. Mm hmm. No, I mean, you let them say that. You don't cut them off because you don't care. But we're not concerned about that because we're not living in it. But you let them say all that stuff. Okay, so the process is, I'm just going to ad hoc this. I could do it the old way, but I don't think it's communicating well. So the process is you find a motivated seller to speak to. Uh-huh. You dial the phone and you pre-qualify them, which I'm going to show you how to do in a minute. Mm-hmm. 
you feel like this is somebody you want to spend the next 20 minutes with because there's a potential of them saying yes to your ideas. Yeah. Okay. In that 20 minutes, you're talking about the seller's willingness or emotional desires that would get them to sign the documents that will control the property. Mm -hmm. So let's say you're not sure about this deal. So instead of acquiring the deal and setting it up so you are fully responsible for it, and then anything that comes down the road, you're stuck with. You would simply just sign an option agreement, which is a one or two page agreement. Tell the seller that you want to go market this property for 90 days. Right, which means you're going to put it on Zillow, you're going to put it on Vail.com, you're going to put it on Apartments.com, uh, Turbo Tenants, uh, 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 Facebook, Craigslist. And you're going to start showing this property. You're going to get feedback from this property. Mm -hmm. The mistake that most rookies make, or most people that are listening to us, is they think they need to do the due diligence on the property. No, you send your sellers there and let your sellers do the due diligence on the property because they'll tell you what's wrong with it. They'll tell you how much it's worth. They'll tell you how to do the deal structure. You mean the buyers.com. You said, sellers. Well? you said sellers. So, I mean, yeah, the, buyer, I like the buyers. Yeah, because yes, the buyers will come sorry. and they look at the property. They say things or they might have. I brought <clears throat> my, my cousin, the carpenter, and he said, so you'll find out stuff. That's what you're saying. So the buyer does the due diligence. Why are you doing that? Why do you think you need that skill? Why, why? If you're not going to commit to this property until you find your buyer. Now, I don't do this because I'm more than confident to evaluate a property. But in the beginning, I did not. Right. So let the buyer educate you. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah. Now you know what the buyer is willing to pay, what they're willing to do, the problems with the property. And you go back to the seller and say, okay, well, the foundation's cracked. Ooh. And uh, I, got, I, got, I got offers of this amount of money, and you put yourself between the buyer and the seller and make money. I think the important thing of what you're saying right there for a rookie viewpoint is that the first time you sit and talk to somebody and figure out numbers, even if you send them a memorandum or some paperwork, until you're in the lawyer's office with the contracts and the money's going back, but you're not, you're not stuck with anything for quite a while if you do it the right like we say do the option so you, you don't you're not stuck with the first thing that comes out of your mouth you can change right. yep so why are you worried about the conversation because why are you worried about the deal structure you just say to the seller so so now now we're going to get into a little bit of how do you do pre-qualifying and i'm going to come back to this so the solopreneur script that we use right mm-hmm starts off with is the house for sale mm -hmm. yeah why do you well first of all well let me let me back up for a second because uh i'm going to elaborate on something here that could make sense to some or not mm. i wrote a checklist for the offer how to how to make an offer it's the offer checklist for career real estate mm -hmm. right there are pre offer scenarios that most do not do in other words if you were to make an ideal offer what would it include you with me i think so N not well or no just keep keep, keep explaining so I'm just going to rattle them off. I'm not going to go into any of them. We could spend a whole podcast just doing this. And if somebody wants to do that, then send a support ticket and I will. Right? So mm -hmm. number one, choose a comfortable location to work in. Okay. Don't make the phone call while you're driving to work. Mm -hmm. Or the TV's on. Or the kids are in the background. Or you you're, you're, you have a present time problem of, I got to be to work in 10 minutes. I'll make this call first. Mm -hmm. Right? Make sure, number two, make sure the number you're calling from is the callback number you want the seller to call you at because if you call them on their cell phone, they're going to redial that number. Yeah. Right? Make sure, this is number three, make sure you know the number you want the seller to call you back on so you can leave it on the voicemail. 
This is stupid stuff, but I'm telling you, people don't do this. Well, it can break down at any point. I mean, any activity has like step, 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 step. And any step, if you break it, it's a chain and it's gone. We're trying to make it easy for them too, right? We're trying to yeah. make it possible for them to call us back. Yeah, but these are things them. that cause the stress because you, you, you're, you're, you're skipping the fundamentals. Yeah. Number four, make sure you have a place to take notes, either on software or on paper or something. And not only take notes, but be able to go find them later when mm -hmm. they call back. <laughs> Easily. <laughs> yep. Where's that piece of paper? That was on the desk three weeks ago. <laughs> Here's what I do. Number five, uh -huh. type the address into Google, right? And get an idea of what the comps would be. This takes literally five minutes. This is not a four day, like, let's let's go see everything about the house I can figure out. All it is is, is I average the three to five websites. You know, Zillow, Trulia, Redfin, Realtor.com. You know, whatever they are. And I just literally open them up. I write a number down or I put it in my calculator and then I divide it by. So if I did five properties, I divide it by five and that's my average price. So when I talk to the seller, at least I have an idea. Sure. Right. Have your scripts in front of you. Make sure you have your scripts in front of you. This is number six. Right. Now. We have two scripts. We open with the solopreneur script, and then if they say no, no, and I'm going to tell you this in a minute, we go to the Grand Slam offer. So we have two scripts in front of us, and we switch from one to the other at a certain point, which I'm going to tell you how to do that in a minute. Mm -hmm. We have a Grand Slam calculator, which I think that link is in the chat today. If you go in, if you go into the description, uh, that link is in there. I think you can get all that stuff there. Mm. Okay, I'm 99% I'm sure about that. So make sure you have your your two scripts and the calculator that you're going to use for the Grand Slam offer because the Grand Slam offer is what's going to make you a deal. Yeah. Right? Now, that's eight steps, Peter. Before you even uh, hit the dial. Now we're going to call the seller. Okay. Okay? So, if they don't answer, make sure you leave a message. Right? And in the message, here's what you're going to say. My name is Bill Hawthorne. I'm calling you about the property at 123 Main Street. I don't know if you're selling it or not, but I have an unbelievable offer for you. Let's chat. If they do answer, you introduce yourself. You you exchange a few pleasantries. You know, like, hi, how are you today? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Okay, good. Do you have a few minutes? I, wanted, I called about the house over at 123 Main Street. You got a few minutes we can chat? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now you're ready to start talking. That's 10 steps before we even got to the, the first question. I think that's more important because we do so much of this by phone rather than just walking into the house where you can really see the person. It's, it's, it's easier in a way. It's more real. Right. We have a, 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 more barriers on the phone, so we want to set it up a little better to give us a better chance. Well, these are all things working against you if you don't set them up. If, if you don't have a place to write down notes or if you have attention on how am I going to remember this in a week when he calls me back or, you know, you don't want, you want to have a clean slate. Yep. What is a clean slate? A clean slate means there's no conceived ideas of how this should go. Bill, you might have to tell us, uh, all us young boys and girls, what a slate is. Well, just think of it as a blackboard. Yeah, I say like, that because so, I don't know if people have those anymore. <laughs> yeah, so, 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 so let's say you need to work on a math problem, mm -hmm. right? Instead of looking at somebody else's math and, and 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 getting you to start thinking that way, that may or may not be right, you want to start with a clean board. You know, like a no preconceived ideas you have no idea how this is going to work it doesn't matter what they say or do yeah it just doesn't matter yeah that's why you don't like having people like me or sean tell you what the deal is before you've walked through the door or made the phone call you want to actually see what it is to see what should happen in fact so you've never asked me why i want you to ask me why do i do that because you've never asked oh, me that. well I, I well i thought it was Maybe. obvious that if i say Hey, Bill, this is a subject too. We should do this. We should do that. I don't have all the information yet because I haven't talked more than a little bit to somebody 
that could be wrong. So why, why why start from that viewpoint? You need to ignore that and just start with a clean slate. That's what I thought. Is okay. it something else? So, so yes. Oh, what is it then? So the, the reason why I do this and I ignore you guys is because you guys, you and especially my students, I just went through a two-week battery of a student who is a brand new student telling me there was 15 subject two deals in, in Texas. It took me two weeks of every day or every other day texting her. I had to speak to the seller. I had to do an analysis. I even, it was, it was a spreadsheet. I even sent it off to somebody else. When my instinct about the deals were wrong, the deal was not a deal. And here's the reason why. It's because you guys, meaning you and Sean or my students, always give me the math mm -hmm. and are, 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 are persistent on this is a deal. Mm -hmm. You don't do a good job of evaluating the emotional desires. Exactly. So I want to do emotional desires first and then back into the math. Mm -hmm. So when I, when I go in, I mean a clean slate. It's like I have no preconceived ideas of what can happen. Yeah, I want to make sure that I, I think, yeah, I could maybe do a subject to deal in this or maybe I could do a seller finance or, I mean, but that's it. Yeah. And I want to talk to the seller and get their emotional desires. What's because selling a house is not an easy thing. Mm -hmm. You don't just like this is not like, oh, I'm going to put it on Facebook Marketplace. I'm going to put my my dresser that I don't want in my bedroom anymore on the front lawn and I'm going to put it for free and somebody <laughs> takes it. Mm -hmm. Right. Or mm -hmm. put it on uh, Facebook Marketplace and an hour later somebody took it. That's right. A house is a lot of work. It's months and months and months worth of work sometimes. Yeah. And a lot of hidden labor. Sure. And mental strain. Mm -hmm. So what is on the other side of that that's pushing them to do that? There's something that so so let's say let's say you got two trains on one track heading towards one another. Mm. And they meet. They don't smash, they just meet. If one train is 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 stronger than the other, it's going to push the other train backwards, right? Sure. Or vice versa. Depending on which train is more powerful is on which how they're going to push back. Yep. Right? If they had equal power, they would just sit there and they would just never move. Mhm. Mm Does that make sense? Sure. So I don't know where I was going with that. So I uh, well, you're talking about when you're in the house with somebody or before we go actually talk to somebody, the numbers, the type of deal doesn't really depend on the numbers uh, unless they're really wrong, wrong. Depends what the person's interest and desire is. If, so the train thing is, is if the seller has a stronger opinion about what they want to do than me, they're going to push me backwards. Right. But if we can do that, it'd be great. If we can't do that, cause what they're asking is not... It just doesn't work for us. Then right. we, we just keep going the other way. Okay, enough theory. So let's go. So so now we're at a point where we we do you have time to talk? Yes, I do. Okay. First question is: Is the house for sale? Mm-hmm. Why do you ask that? Because they could have sold it an hour ago. Mm-hmm. Right. Whose name is on the deed? Why do we ask that? Because we want to make sure we're speaking to the person that can actually pull the trigger and make the decisions. It's the decision maker. It's an, it's an encoded question. In other words, it's not a direct question. It's around the back door question. You're sneaking in the back door by asking whose name is on the deed so you know who you have to talk to. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, the name is in my mother's name. Okay, when can when I talk to your mother? Instead of spending 45 minutes talking to the wrong person, they say, well, I'll take all this information and give it to my mother. You're like, what? Yeah, he's you, not going to explain thought you had it. a deal. No, and he's not going to explain it right after we spent 45 minutes explaining it to him. It's not going to get back to her. Right. Then you ask how much you're asking for the property. Right. Now, these are conditional, meaning you can or cannot answer them, but I can tell you they are very valuable questions that, that tell you the emotional desire. Uh -huh. So, so far we've done the math and the pre-qualifying, some pre-qualifying. Now, we can ask them conditional questions. How much you're asking for the property is the question. How did you arrive at that number? Mm -hmm. 
Then you would ask them, okay, so why did you decide to sell now? And when you ask these three questions, I haven't given you the third question. When you ask these three questions, you will get dropped in your lap the entire absolute entire mental image picture and emotional desires when you ask this next question if you put these three questions in a row which is i just gave them to you right how much you asking for the property that's the main question and then you then you divert from there you go how did you arrive at that number question one find out why they decided to sell now that's question two mm -hmm. question three which will give you their emotional desire and whether you should continue or not. Ask them how much they were planning to get once they closed on the property mm -hmm. and the closing was all done. What did they expect to get once this property was done? That will tell you everything. That is your pre-qualifying clincher. Mm-hmm. Do you see that? Honestly, I've been wondering where the parts of the scripts were, where you would find those things out, because they're they're not blatant, and because it was optional, you don't really need to do that. I didn't think it was that important, because it was like conditional. But if that's where you find those things out, I think it sounds a lot more important than I thought before. That's why I'm doing this podcast, and that's why I'm breaking it down. Now, it's a little bit long and a lot of theory, but I'm trying to get you to see why I did this. I'm giving you the background and the theory of why these pieces and parts are there so you can understand how important they are. Yeah. It almost sounds like you're just trying to figure out what the, if the numbers are right and if he's got the right numbers. Just on the surface. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because... Because selling a house is a big task, and, and the emotional desire is going to influence those numbers. Suppose the house is worth two hundred thousand dollars, and the seller is asking one hundred fifty thousand. What does that tell you right away? Well, it sounds like he's de uh, more desperate or been trying. And not he, so. He needs if the house to move. is worth two hundred thousand, and are asking two hundred fifty thousand. What does that tell you? Yeah, he's he's going to be right. hard. He's going to be a, a a train with more more engine power. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, now we ask, how much were you planning to get at the closing, or what did you expect to accomplish when you closed this property? Now, here, here is a problem that I have with a lot of people that are. These are usually people that have paralysis of uh, paralysis by analysis. Uh, these are people that tend to not like confrontation. These are people that. Um, would much rather not talk to people and they have to really work at picking the phone up. Mm -hmm. uh, these are people that deal with fear. They will not want to penetrate the social veneer and get to the core problem mm -hmm. by asking this question. What were you going to do with the money once you got it? That will tell you why they're selling. Hmm. So, that, so you're going along, right? Find out what they, why they decided to sell now. Oh well, you know, blah 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 blah. Okay, what we expect to get from the deal? What, what are we expect to get from the sale when you close? Oh, I'm going to get twenty grand. Oh, what are you going to do with the twenty grand? Hmm. You know what's interesting? Um, we can talk about motivated. Obviously, you know, sometimes people won't answer questions. How much is the mortgage? Oh, I don't feel comfortable talking. Those few questions. If they don't answer those, how could we consider them motivated, right? Mm -hmm. And if they are motivated, they will tell you. And if they don't, are we done already? So to your point, because you've asked me this question, like uh, I've had a few coaching clients, and if you read the script and understand it, you'll, you'll start. But anyways, this is a perfect place to ask if the numbers are right, would you sell for what you owe on it? And you know right away whether you got it. This is oh. the first five minutes. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. I'm not done. I'm going to tell you this, and then we're going to move on to a couple other things I want to do. Mm -hmm. So you've asked them, is the house for sale? Whose name is on the deed? How much are you asking for the property? Mm -hmm. Those are the core must-ask must, must ask questions. And then the conditional questions is, 
how did you arrive at that number? Yep. Find out why they decided to sell now. And when you say now, you mean don't leave that word out, right? Yeah. It's not just why you want to sell. Like now, what happened now? Did something happen now? That little word. See, I'm bringing that up because I know you and I know when you come up with these questions and how rookies, including me sometimes, will leave something out because they don't realize the importance. But that's not an accident. Now. I didn't come up with these questions. I want you to understand these are not, I did not invent these questions. Mm -hmm. The seller told me these things. The seller taught me these questions. Mm. After talking to so many people, after a while, I started noticing that people were doing the same thing over and over again. So I yeah. just put questions to ask because they would give me those answers. Yeah. The deals I did, I would get those answers. That's why I started asking those questions. Yeah, he'll say, oh, we lived here for 30 years, but... So hang on, I want to keep the oh, pattern. So now you ask them, what were they planning on... Uh, you ask you asked them, uh, what were you planning on getting at the closing? And then... They say, oh, well, I need 10 grand. Well, what do you need the 10 grand for? Now watch. Now watch. This is all within five minutes, if you yeah. do this correctly. Oh, yeah. 10 minutes tops. Oh, yeah. Okay? Well, the best way I can pay you blah, whatever they say, $400,000 for the property, and as is condition, and with no closing costs, is to give you monthly payments without any landlord obligations on your part until I can pay you off. Is it possible we could talk about how that works? And right now, right here, is payday. Mm -hmm. You know whether you're going to spend time with this person or not. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't want to get into this today because it's a whole theory within itself. If they say they're willing to talk about terms, which is the payment, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you move on to saying to them, well, okay, that's good. Let's talk about the payments. Well, see, what I do is I specialize in selling to folks who normally don't qualify for a bank mortgage, which is about 80% plus of the market, and sell them i sell this, this house to them with a lease purchase program. And they are responsible for all the repairs and maintenance. Think of this. When someone rents a car, are they going to change the oil, wash it, do a tune-up, change the tires? No, right? But if they own the car, they will wash it, they will do the tune-up, and there will always be brand new tires in the car. This particular buyer knows they're going to own the house, so they take care of it. Does that make sense? Mm hmm Good. How much do you pay for your total payment now, your monthly payment now? And you walk into, because you already got the price, because there's only four numbers we need. Price, monthly payment, the duration, and if they desire a down payment. So as long as you know those four main points when you're talking to somebody, you can be stress-free and you know you got everything. And however you get those questions answered, it's fine with me. Now, that's if they want to talk terms. Yeah. Yeah. If they say, no, I don't want to take monthly payments. I don't want to do any of that. Which, by the way, is about 97% of the people. 95 to 97% of the people. So you're going to hear that the most. Mm. This is the reason why you have the Grand Slam offer calculator open. Because there's four numbers in the Grand Slam offer that will show them how much money they will make make by keeping the property three years. For example, a two hundred thousand dollar house, they'll 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 make almost three hundred thousand if they hold it for two years or three years. Mm-hmm. So you'll have the Grand Slam calculator open and you'll and you'll put the number in before when you did your comps, right? You put your number in. Say the house was worth two hundred thousand. You put two hundred thousand in the calculator, and you go to the bottom of the calculator, and it says th- over three years. When you see the calculator, you'll see. Don't see what I'm talking about. On the bottom of the calculator, it'll tell you that they're if they hold this property for three years, they're going to make two hundred eighty-four thousand dollars. When they say they want all cash, and they're not willing to take terms, yeah. At this point, you say to them, "Oh, so you wouldn't be interested in maybe making." Uh, maybe selling the house for up to two hundred eighty-four thousand dollars, 
and they feel foolish to say, what do you mean? I mean, if they don't ask you how it works, they feel foolish. Well, just out of curiosity, like, what you talking about, Willis? Right. But a quick question. Before you got there, did we, did we check what the cash price would be just in case it was low enough it would be, a, be worth it for us? Did we, we ask that too? Um, well, the only, the only type of people you want to deal with yeah. are ones that take monthly payments or give you a discount. Yeah. So if they give you a discount, then that's fine. It's a good question. Yeah. But they, 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 usually, they usually don't, but I guess part of it is the comparison that it would be low and then the, the Grand Slam offer would be much better. Yeah. But at least um, when they when – they, at some point there's a comparison with the Grand Slam offer that if they were just to go sell it like for cash with a realtor – with all the closing costs, it's a pretty low number. It's not, it's not what they expect right? compared to the Grand Slam. It's a lot more. So there's a lot in play here when you listen to this today, right? Yeah. So, so you want to, the number one thing I want you to take away before we bug out here is you need to pre-qualify. Yeah. You don't need to go learn how to convert. You don't need to be me with 30 years experience. The only way you are going to get good at converting people is to talk to a lot of people and make a lot of deals. Mm -hmm. The only way you're going to make a lot of deals is to look for the low-hanging fruit first and find those engaged sellers. Now, I'm not pushing this, but that's what Creative REI Reply does for you. That's how the premise, the invention of Creative REI Reply, which is our software, was just for that. I mean... We put leads in your account every day, FISBOs and expired listings in your account every day. We text them automatically. When they text back, our, our, our robots or our AI answers them and makes an appointment. So all of that hard stuff of finding the motivated seller and how to have these conversations is, is done. It's all done for you. Oh yeah, by the way, that's on the that's on the acquisition side of it. When we're selling houses, that all works the same way when we're selling houses too. <clears throat> you pull a phone number from Creative REI Reply, and that's the phone number you put on all these websites. So when the lead comes in, it automatically pre-qualifies them, so you only talk to the people that have money and can afford it. Crazy. The out point in the business is People think you need to manipulate others to do deals. And I'm not a salesman. I'm not, I don't like to be pushy. I'm not a salesman. Well, you're doing them a favor. When you do a few deals, you start to realize you're doing them a favor. Right? Every, yeah. every person selling a house has one of two things. They have need or greed. And I just showed you how to handle both. Need or means that the property has something wrong with it and it's putting pressure on them. They don't want the payment. They don't want to take care of the house anymore. They moved out of state and, the, and it's just there and it's gnawing at them because they're 2,000 miles away. Mm -hmm. You know, it reminds them of their dead spouse. Uh, they had a divorce and they, they don't want the house. There's some, some need for them to get this relief. Or greed has nothing to do with the house. It has to do with they think they have profit in the house and they want that profit to go do something else. So I got to pay my daughter's college tuition and I, I need the 20 grand out of the house. That's why I'm doing it. <laughs> uh, I, I moved out of the house and I got transferred to another state and I need to buy a new house and I need the $15,000 to put down on my new house. And I promise you, when you hear the greed stuff, that's why the Grand Slam offer came up, their greed glands will swell because there is no house that I've ever done, $200,000 or up. I'll tell you right now, the average house in America is 419000 Yep. You do a $419,000 for three years on a lease option, and they're selling for almost 600000 Yeah. So you say to the seller... Well, you're making $184,000 on this, on this house over the next three years with no landlord obligation. You become the bank. 
So you're telling me you can't go find that $15,000 somewhere else? You're going to give up $184,000 worth of profit over the next four years to get $15,000 to move into your new house? That doesn't make sense, does it? Completely changes their reality. Does this make sense? Oh, yeah. Do you think I covered my uh, my description today? No, it, it helped me because I do these calls and, you know, I, I can talk to people, but um, I know I, I'm not as good as you, so I'm always listening. What else should I do better? And the, the, the first few questions done just on the script, you can tell if they're motivated or not. They, ha they, they have to answer those questions. If they won't give you the information. Oh, 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 wait a minute. I need to fix that. I'm sorry. I'm glad you said that. What? Oh, my God, you just triggered something. What? So... I, I need to fix this. What? Every seller, every seller, 100% of every seller is motivated. Mm -hmm. What you need to find out is what are they motivated for? Right. And that's where the need and greed thing comes in. Mm -hmm. Right. So if they're looking to get money out of the property because the market's really high and this is their chance to cash out, mm -hmm. they're motivated for that money. What you're doing is you're pre-qualifying them to do things the way we do things. Yeah. Right? And mostly it's, it's, it's get terms, you know, do monthly payments or discount. Mm -hmm. So every seller is motivated. I can't tell you how many times I've had coaching clients. In the beginning of my coaching, I used to do, I used to do calls with the coaching client and the seller. Mm -hmm. I stopped doing that. The reason why I stopped doing that is because I would hear the coach for 10 minutes tell me how motivated they are, and I would get on the phone, and within three minutes, I would pre-qualify them, and they were like, I didn't know that. Oh, my God, Bill, I'm sorry. I didn't know that. That was amazing. How, why did you ask that question? I'm like, because I don't want to waste my time talking to this person if they're not motivated yeah. for what I want to talk about. Right? Yeah, so this I mean, it's, let me well, ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Would you try to sell a boat to somebody who lives in Alaska? Um, well, if he's on the coast, I would. <laughs> I thought you were going to say desert. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. Would you try to sell a boat on somebody that lives in the desert? Yeah, because I need to practice. I figure if I can do that, I can do anything. <laughs> yeah, sure. No, but the I mean? point, so the point like is there's... You've got to match what you can do for that person yeah. to, what, to what's needed and wanted. So we're talking about motivation for what we do because i know what you mean like, oh yeah he's motivated yeah he, he wants his half million dollars for his little baby condo no right. yeah. everybody else is selling those condos for one hundred fifty thousand. he wants 500 yeah i talked to the guy it was a very short conversation bye-bye yeah, so you're pre-qualifying yeah see so you need to extend that pre-qualifying which is the questions i just covered with you mm -hmm. and again that stuff uh, there's a link in the description where you can go get that stuff including the calculator Right? So just mm -hmm. go check that out. Mm. Good. Right? Very good. So the final punchline is if you know your mission and your purpose, all this will become easier. Mm. So when you pick up the phone, your mission or your purpose should be, I wonder what this seller's situation is and why they're selling the house and how I could help them. Mm -hmm. If you went at it that way, not worried about and if you did that, the numbers will come. Your 10 grand or your 5 grand or your the pressures that you're dealing with will work. You will feel better as a person because you're helping someone. Yep. <laughs> so your mission or purpose will revolve around that. All your questions and your and your and your and your uh, sharing of mental image pictures and ideas will all stem from that purpose. I'm telling you right now, point blank, the hardest thing in the world to do on these calls, the biggest challenge everyone has, is when the seller is trying to blow you off or think. He or she is done talking to you, and you're still trying to nurture them along and help them.
And that's because you're not pre-qualifying. Hmm. That's where your losses are. That's why you don't want to get on the phone and talk to the next <laughs> seller because you, your feelings got hurt. It wasn't the seller, it was you. Because you didn't follow the procedures we just talked about today. Including having to set up space to make the phone call. <laughs> Make sense? Absolutely. Perfect. All right. Please make sure you uh, subscribe to wherever you're watching us or listening to us. Make sure you push the like button. Leave a comment. Um, if you have any questions, you can go to flippinghousesforrookies.com. Top right hand side is support. Don't forget, there's about uh, 25 or 30 free things you can get there. Some of the older scripts are there. The the entrepreneur script that I just uh, talked about is actually in the chat. There's a link there for you to go to inside the. I'm sorry, not in the chat, in the uh, description of this podcast. So go there. Make sure you check that out. <coughs> also, um, if you want to join our a uh, little uh, mastermind group with a hundred and something people in it. Go to WhatsApp Messenger, type in Let's Talk Real Estate, and you'll find it there. And there's a bunch of people there. Sometimes that, that group is stagnant for a week or two, and then somebody asks a question and it blows up. So, uh, But it's a good place to get other like-minded people around you. Um, and I think that's it. So I uh, really appreciate your support and being here, uh, especially you guys that come here every week. I know who you are because I see you here all the time. I really appreciate that. And uh, have a good week. Flourish and prosper. And we will talk to you on episode number 406. Over now. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to the hottest real estate topics on the planet with Bill and Pete. If you want to continue learning how to buy and sell real estate without money or credit, head over to FlippingHouses.club for some cutting-edge real estate wealth tools. Or contact us at info at FlippingHouses.club.